Okay, let's start. So great to see so many people here for day two. <laughs> I was going to ask how the after party went, but I guess it's fairly clear that it went really well for quite a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sure they'll turn up later bleary-eyed. So we're, uh, they're, you know, they're missing out on a treat by, uh, by, by not being here because we've got a pretty exciting start to the day. Um, a core panel, everyone here on stage, um, is part of building WordPress, um, which is a pretty special position to be in. Um, so we're very excited to be hearing from them. And I think um, equally, if not even more excited, to have Mike Liddle, uh, the co-founder of WordPress, um, here chairing the panel. Um, so we've got Mike Liddle chair. We've got Constantine Obenland uh, sat here. And we've got Pascal Bircher. Um, and then we have John Blackburn, and on the end, Tammy Lister. Um, so that's our panel. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Mike, and he's going to uh, kick the panel off. Um, and we're hoping for lots of questions from you guys and, and girls. So if you've got um, uh, pressing questions, uh, you know, you want to know how to become a core contributor, you want to know how, how WordPress is made, then get ready to ask those questions. So here we go, Mike. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing I'd like to do, actually, is ask the panel to just introduce themselves and perhaps just mention a little bit about the, the perhaps their specialisms within Core and, and what they do. So over to you, Constantine. Uh, thanks. My name is uh, Constantine. I have been working with WordPress uh, just over half a decade now. Um, I specialize in Themes API, I would say. Um, I added, or like I was responsible for um, custom logo now in 4.5 coming out, um, side icon in 4.3. I let the 4.3 release. Um, I'm currently working on rewriting the plugin directory for WordPress, and yeah, do a lot of other um, WordPress.org uh, meta work. So I'm Pascal. Uh, I've been using WordPress for about 10 years now, and I've been responsible for the embeds feature in WordPress 4.4 and probably some bugs here and there. Morning, everyone. I'm John. Uh, I was a release lead for WordPress 4.1 last year. Um, recently been doing some work on better support for HTTPS and OEmbed and things like that. Um, generally work behind the scenes on uh, creating bugs and fixing bugs in WordPress. Hi, I'm Tammy. Uh, I worked, uh, helped get 2016 released. Uh, my focus is kind of themes and also design, uh, particularly focusing on UX, and I've been doing some user research recently. Um, before that, I was also working with Buddy, uh, on the BuddyPress project, so I've kind of worked in both WordPress and BuddyPress. Uh, thank you. Um, so I've got some pre-prepared questions that were asked. Um, earlier through various channels um, and I think it'd be a good idea to perhaps just to kick off with some of these to just get you used to the idea and get everybody warmed up, get their jaws warmed up as we say first thing in the morning. Um, so uh, one of the questions I think is probably one that would have come from the audience setting but we'll get hopefully quickly out of the way um, and that is um, when will we drop PHP 5.2 support and or you know when are we going to upgrade the minimum uh, uh, PHP uh, requirement. So who thinks they want best to answer that? <laughs> yeah, so this topic uh, uh, comes up quite a lot. I'm pretty sure it's come up in every Q&A session we've done for about the last nine or ten years, actually. But um, So as uh, many of you know, uh, hopefully WordPress is a very user-oriented piece of software. Um, it means that if we are to introduce uh, an increased Sorry, if we are to increase the PHP version requirement, then we have to fix the usability aspect of that for the end user. Um, it, a lot of people who use WordPress don't even know what WordPress is, so there's no kind of expectation that they would know what PHP is or what a web server is or, or, or how they can even go about increasing the version of PHP that they've got on their server. So if we were to increase the minimum version of PHP, we would really need to look at the uh, the way that we can communicate that to the end user without completely baffling them. And it's the same thing for plugin dependencies and uh, dependency management and things like that. These are all actually fairly simple things to fix on a technical level, but the end user needs to have a, a good way to 
uh, handle that kind of upgrade and these requirements that we're going to be imposing on them. So, yeah, we just wanted to get that out of the way. It's a, it's a topic that's on everyone's minds. Um, uh, some of the other issues there are uh, whether we even get any value from uh, increasing the minimum version of PHP. For example, if we, uh, if we jump to PHP 5.3 as a minimum, are there actually uh, enough features and things in there that are going to benefit the WordPress project to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to benefit the WordPress project in, in order for us to, you know, be able to say, right, we're going to drop PHP 5.2 support. Um, so, yeah, basically it comes down to uh, user experience and putting the user first. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that is at the cost of keeping developers happy. So that's about it, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Any, anyone else got anything else to pitch in on that? I think that was a pretty, pretty good summary. Um, next one, more interesting. Um, what recent and uh, upcoming features uh, about WordPress are e uh, each of you excited about? So, start with you, Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, um, since I'm first in line here, I'm just going to say REST API, <laughs> and let you guys think about something else. Um, so, as you as you probably know, um, uh, the the REST API infrastructure was introduced in 4.4. Um, we we're still waiting for the endpoints to be added. Um, so, I'm really excited about um, the infrastructure, and I'm looking forward for the, to the endpoints. Is that is that a valid answer? Yeah. So Constantine already mentioned uh, REST API. Uh, I could say uh, Shiny Updates, because that's the feature plugin he's been working on, uh, which is an awesome thing, because you can just update your, um, your plugins or your themes or even your site um, without like refreshing the, the page and gives you a better user experience. Yeah, way faster, too. <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> um, so. Slightly different. I'm excited uh, in this release. I'm excited we've removed the word submit from uh, the password protect form. It just had a button that said submit by it. So we've actually got something that's a bit more human. And I'm really excited about more human language and interactions in WordPress, which is kind of the next level of a project. And I'm also really excited about the feature project focus. And that's going to be really research driven and kind of having. UX as a big focus of what we do. That makes me very excited. <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel? <laughs> uh, so one of the things I'm excited about recently is the localization of the plugin and theme directories on WordPress.org. So it's not quite part of core itself, but it, it connects the whole kind of ecosystem together. It's really interesting. Uh, if you speak, uh, uh, for example, Hebrew, you can actually um, find out about WordPress, go to WordPress.org, download and install WordPress, and install some plugins and themes without having to know any English now. The whole process is uh, completely translated, and that's the same for a lot of languages, and a lot more are in progress. So the whole translation thing for me is really exciting. Um, I think we've had some stats um, yesterday, which uh, uh, says that it's only about 40% of sites now that are running in English. So that means 60% of the sites which aren't running English don't even need to see English in order to be able to install and use WordPress. Cool. Thank you. Um, that was good and enlightening. Um, I'm going to do one more from this list. Um, and in fact, well, no, I'm not going to do that one because you've kind of mentioned it already, which was about plugin and theme dependencies. Um, but here's one, one I'm particularly interested in myself. What workflow will help ensure that all commits going forward are WCAG 2AA accessible? So that means more accessible. Uh, so what, it was uh, what workflow will help ensure that all commits going forward are accessible? Because we've, we've had a mention that that's the desire. So how is that going to be achieved? Do you want to take that one or who wants to take that one? So we just had a good chat with Graham about this, who's our resident accessibility expert. Um, just to clarify the question there, uh, it's about the web content accessibility guidelines. WordPress now requires that all changes to WordPress uh, meet the AA uh, requirements, which is um, 
uh, it's quite a subjective set of requirements and it's, it's, it's all fairly simple as well. It's about keeping your navigation menus uh, standard, uh, making sure you're not using title attributes and you've got alt tags, like really, really simple stuff. Um, ensuring, that we, uh, ensuring that WordPress complies to those standards means um, uh, that we can use a few um, uh, automated tools. Um, Graham was there was telling me about some uh, some tools that Joe Dolson has uh, has written. Um, oh, that's right. He's written a plugin, sorry, which uh, you can install on your site and it will run your site through the accessibility tests. Um, it's something maybe we need to look at for Core, um, hooking up to Tenon, um, which is a, a web content accessibility guidelines tester. Um, but there's also the awareness in general um, that developers um, should be aware of, which is um, a general awareness of accessibility. Um, in Graham's talk yesterday, he mentioned that a great way to get a long way into accessibility is to make sure that the site or the administration area of WordPress rather works with the keyboard. So it means getting developers used to hitting that tab key and tabbing through all of the elements in the admin area to make sure they're accessible, make sure that the tab focus is visible. So maybe we need to have a bit of a think about how we can bring that all together into a, a workflow. So when we uh, make large kind of uh, visual changes to the admin area in WordPress, that that is taken into consideration. So something I'd like to add on that, um, which kind of goes beyond the uh, focus on purely accessibility, I think, is user testing and testing all users, no matter what ability they have, not, not just focusing on one particular group or one everything. So I think part of what we can also do in our workflow is user test everything and widely user test everything. And it's a chance for more people to get involved in the project who maybe aren't developers because user testing is such a useful thing that we can have. Um, at contribution days, I would love to see user testing be a first cast citizen and part of that, and actually a group, so. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else? Pitching on that one? Okay, let's um, take our first question from the audience. So uh, if you'd raise your hand, you've got a question to ask uh, the panel, generally or an individual. We must have some questions. Come on, raise your hands. Okay, so just wait for a mic to get to you and then just chat with her. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's quite loud. Um, so I'm contributing a lot to WordPress multi site. And in 2013, I think it was Nathan wrote sort of a, a roadmap for that, um, what that would look like. So I was trying to contribute work towards that roadmap. And then I got a lot of my tickets closed saying, oh, that's not what we're doing with this anymore. My question, so my, my point is like, if, if you're gonna have a roadmap and it changes, should you be updating that? And I think, you know, what do you, what do you guys think about ro having a roadmap for stuff, just you know, putting a blog post out saying, this is where we wanna go with it, and then if it changes, updating it? Okay, so does anybody wanna take that? <laughs> Go on, John, you're going to say that? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> Nobody else is volunteering. Oh, go on, Tammy, thank you. Um, I'm not going to necessarily be able to speak on that exact thing, but I think um, on a human level, if we publish something, or if I publish a roadmap, and I've, I've done things like that, uh, and it changes, then absolutely uh, we should iterate on that. And I think part of the future projects is probably going to see that happening more. There's like a fortnightly check-in on things now. Um, so I... I think there's probably going to be more of that. Um, um, I, I just think if, if something changes, communication is important. We have the main blogs, so definitely communicating that would be important. Um, so the post that you're talking about was published by uh, one of the lead developers called Andy Nason, and he's not so involved in the project at the moment because he's gone off and he's working for the US government doing some interesting digital things there. So he's sort of been a bit out of the frame at the moment, so he's not been able to really kind of push that forward. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, if we're going to change uh, roadmaps, which is perfectly fine, you know, to have a roadmap and then to change your mind at a later on date, yeah, then communication there is is really important, yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's time for us to have an updated multi-site roadmap. We have been doing a bunch of work on multi-site lately, but yeah, maybe we should have a new 
roadmap for the next 18 months or so? It's not just multi-site, just ge generally all features. You sh we should have a goal that we're all trying to work towards. And you're right, if it changes, it's fine. But like, if it, it felt like it changed behind closed doors and was never updated, some somebody had a Slack conversation somewhere and it changed. And I was trying to work towards that roadmap, and it's frustrating for me because I'm wasted my time writing patches. Yeah, sure. Sometimes these things change organically as well. They just sort of like evolve a little bit, and then nobody really realizes that what we're actually aiming for now isn't what we'd originally decided to aim for. Uh, yeah, communication. I think uh, we had a similar question last year, and it was that <laughs> we need to make sure that we're always on top of communication and that's not just the core team that's all of the teams involved and the and the particular feature leads and the component leads is it worth doing like a yearly like here's what we want to do with 2016 for all the different areas um Yes, I, th I think it is. Um, that was a topic, actually, I touched on at WordCamp last week, uh, which is about goals of WordPress. Um, so have you got anything you want to say on this, by the way? Because I'll just carry on, if not. Um, so WordPress has never really had much of a, uh, a sort of a focus. It's never really had long-term goals. Like if, you, um, if you go on the uh, archive.org website and go back on the Wayback Machine and look at WordPress.org, from like seven years ago, the description of WordPress is almost the same as it is today. It says WordPress is publishing software that you can use to create a beautiful website, blog, or app. And the only change that was made was the addition of that or app on the end of it. From like seven years ago, it's the same. Um, so it's never really had um, a, a kind of a, uh, a sort of a focus that people can go onto WordPress.org and find out, you know, what is WordPress really doing? Is it going to stay as a blogging platform? Is it going to be an enterprise piece of software that powers biggest websites in the world? Is it going to be a sort of a headless app platform using REST API? It's never really had this direction. So I think WordPress, uh, th this lack of direction has caused WordPress to kind of go, you know, a bit here and there, a bit back and forth on a lot of features. Um, the project is really in need of some long term goals, like you say there. Maybe if we start thinking about some goals for maybe a year or two years or five years, then if we've got some goals, we can then say, right, what are the shorter term goals? What, what do we want to do with multi-site? What do we want to do with the import and export functionality? How do we want to get new users onboarded much easier? Um, I really do think that long term goals are the way forward for the platform, definitely. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, more questions from anyone? This chap over here. Ah, cool. Oh, we'll go on here and then we'll take the one at the back. Thank so, you, Watsu. Sorry. I'm very new to the world of WordPress, so I'm learning a lot right now, and this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, so, where do you see WordPress going in terms of user experience? On, I'm not a developer, I'm more concerned about how people come and use WordPress. So what are some of the key things that are going to help them have a better experience with websites overall um, and better interactions? Okay, who'd like to take something on that? Sammy, yep. So first of all, welcome. And if your background is user experience, I'm really excited that you're interested in contributing to WordPress uh, because that's something that's very dear to my heart um, and I think we need in WordPress. And I think part of what we can do is, <laughs> I said it earlier, but actually watch users. Um, something that's happened on Flow, which is going to become Test, I think it's going to be renamed, um, uh, is there's been a lot of flows, which is like going through the processes in, on different devices, going through the processes of different sections. That's a big thing because half of user experience is data and making things obvious because if things are obvious you can't ignore them. <laughs> um, you can very easily ignore and accept a user experience if you use it all the time but if it's brought to your attention you're just like oh yeah that's really bad we should fix that and fixes will happen and I think people championing uh, kind of championing that doing that um, and then being really annoying core developers about it and saying this needs fixing and I feel there's 
a great lot of voices starting to do that, and I'm really excited about that. The feature projects is one way you can get involved. Um, it's every fortnight, isn't it? Do you want to say when the meeting is? Sorry, because <laughs> I'm trying to remember when it is. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the way that features were developed uh, for WordPress over the last two years years or so has been via feature plugins, which is where we build a feature as a plugin first, and then. Only once we decide that it's ready will it sort of be proposed to go into WordPress. But that's changing slightly now. We're going to call them feature projects instead. And the idea is that the whole um, product design workflow will be considered for the project. So that's like research, design, specking, uh, you know, sort of user testing and stuff before you get to the implementation part of it. So our first chat was last Tuesday. And they're going to be fortnightly for the next, I don't know, few months probably, um, until we sort of get into how that workflow works. Uh, and the meetings are held in Slack in the core channel. Um, so you can just go on there. So I th I'm fairly sure they're going to be fortnightly in the core channel on Tuesday evenings. Sorry. I just want to add one more thing. We also have on track uh, at WordCamp US, we actually have a report for UX feedback which made me so excited. So people can tag that and uh, we, we can go in the ticket and just comment and test things and give opinions. Um, and that to me means that the project's moved a lot more in that direction. So I don't know, I'm really excited about that because it means that we can start making it usable for all users, no matter what your ability is, no matter what device you're using on, no matter what country you're in. And I think that's how WordPress becomes a really usable project. Um, thanks for that. I just uh, myself want to add just a couple of things following on what from one of the things that Tammy said Yes, do pressure the right people to do things, but always with respect and always politely um, <laughs> Because still most of the people who work on this stuff are volunteers So um, it's always best to always be respectful and polite um, But also I want to perhaps bring in Pascal because your experience of getting into WordPress core was via a, um, a feature plugin as it was so are you looking forward to the, the change of this workflow in, in the feature stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that um, because when, when I got involved with that, there was a, a chat about feature plugin, um, uh, about the embeds. Uh, I had an existing plugin, so I haven't had done any user testing before or um, research really. And I think it's great that now you're kind of yeah getting forced to do that. And yeah, well, maybe I have another idea for a feature plugin in the future. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, Constant, you got anything to add to this one? How Pascal became a committer through a feature plugin? No, just, just, just generally, just, just generally on the usability and, and uh, so on. No, I would have um, said the same thing. All right. Okay, so I think we had another asker at the back, if you could raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Come, somebody get your mic. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi, so I'm mostly a user. I'm learning development, but I can see lots of people in Facebook group and all around me being really uh, overwhelmed when they arrive on WordPress. Is there anything in the pipeline about better onboarding for people who are a bit tech adverse? Okay, so. And is that yeah. something I can help with? Sure, so yeah, so the, ask the question was, uh, is there anything in the pipeline for better onboarding of people who want to get involved, who are perhaps tech averse and not really used to the, the environment? Because it's a, it's a mature environment that if you're in it, there's lots of things you know and you know where to start and where to go. So um, other things in the pipeline or what's the best way that people can at least perhaps self-help to get uh, onboarding? Um, I think this is a, an ongoing process for, for the project um, as a whole. Um, one, of, one of the ways that we try to make it easier for people to contribute to WordPress is, is certainly contributor days like the one we had on Friday um, where John led um, a group of people um, and kind of you know, gave them an introductory to how to contribute to WordPress just to lower that barrier of entry um, for a lot of people. Um, so that is one of the things we, um, another, another tool that we use uh, to get people started contributing code um, specifically for WordPress core is a um, a tag um, on track that we use, which is um, uh, good first bugs. Um, these are tickets that are um, 
you know, fairly self-contained, um, fairly small. People have, you know, an easier time grasping the problem there and, and just, you know, get, get an opportunity to, to practice creating a, you know, a subversion diff and uploading that to track, uh, things like that. Um, and then also, um, you know, developer Q&A is like this one where we, you know, share um, chat times, uh, chat channels, and invite people to, to join us um, for these chats. And, um, okay, she's not happy with that answer. No, sorry, I was talking about users, people who arrive in the dashboard and freak out. Lots of new apps now, they've got like a, a welcome suit of things to make you understand the bits in it. So proper like onboarding for people who are going to use the um, software for their own site. Okay. Yeah, so um, there's, there was a project a while ago called the New User Experience Project and um, yeah, the aim of that was to make it easier for people to get into using WordPress, which is, I think is what you meant rather than a developer side of things. Um, and one of the things that came out of that was um, when you first install WordPress and you land on the dashboard, there's now a big kind of welcome message which says, you know, welcome to WordPress, get started here, you can install plugins, install themes, click here to preview your site and things like that. It was a fairly small change, but um, it, was, it was a thing that we had that we hadn't had in the past. Basically, pre prior to that, you would land on the WordPress dashboard and you would sort of go, you know, where do I start? There's a bunch of menu items on the left-hand side. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that could be done. Uh, so Helen, who's one of the lead developers of WordPress, has, has um, put a lot of focus into this lately. And I think one of the things that Helen wants to do is to um, let you preview your entire site, like all, all of the customizations and things in the WordPress customizer uh, from the outset. So you sort of maybe even when you first install WordPress, you land on the customizer instead of landing in a dashboard. And from there, you can change your title, you can browse uh, themes, you can change your theme around, you know, do all of the customization that you might want to do before your site even goes live, or and that's the first thing that's presented to you. Um, I'm not sure whether that is really in progress at the moment or whether it's a bit on the back burner, but that, that would be one of the ways of making it much easier for users to, you know, not have such a roadblock when they, when they first land on the dashboard in WordPress? So I think that came up in the feature projects chat, and I think it's def... I don't want to say definitely, cause I, but I think it's happening because of that. So I would expect that. I think um, you sound quite passionate about it, so I would encourage you to come and join that project. Uh, and I think I learn an awful lot from... Um, I'm going back to it, but user testing and seeing that. So just, I think by listening to new people and listening to people that aren't, we, we have certain models of behavior and patterns that we do because we're so used to WordPress, so we're blind to things. But having people come and remind us, like you just did, I think is super important. And I think the, the Nux focus will really see gains in that and see a lot of more stuff become obvious through that. I just want to add something to that, actually, if I may, um, because I run um, word, uh, beginner courses in WordPress, and um, yeah, I, from people absolutely beginners don't even know what WordPress is, um, and there's uh, just a whole lot of upfront explanation that I have to do to explain to people what these things are. So anything that can improve that, I think, would be um, a great thing. And sometimes it is just about the human words and the terminology and trying to remove some of the more technical terms. So I, I'm looking forward to any project that will help bring that forward as well. Anybody else got anything on that one? Or should we take, take another question? We're running. Okay, if we've got another question, please. So, oh, uh, somebody at the back, yeah? Oh, Jenny, you can go first. Oh, right. This, this chap here, please. Hi. Uh, I develop plugins, um, some of which are on WordPress.org. And like most plugin developers, I use Git. And obviously, WordPress.org doesn't. Um, so I just wondered if there's any tools, plans to help people who develop on Git um, sort of use WordPress as well. But. So anybody want to take that? Uh, so the question was really, uh, so lots of developers are, are working on Git now, um, and are there any plans to, to help developers who work on Git get, make more contributions to core? 
uh, to core or to plugins? Because you, you mentioned plugins. Both. Both. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so a year and a half ago, at the state of the word, um, Matt mentioned how it certainly is a goal of, of you know the core team to get people more involved through Git and give them that you know opportunity to um, contribute code that way. Um, so far, we have um, not made a lot of progress in, in that direction, um, but it is on our roadmap and, and uh, in the backs of our of our minds um, for plugins. Um, I'm currently working on, on rewriting the plugin directory um, where uh, any contribution is welcome, by the way. So if you guys want to help me do that, that would be great. Um, and one of the, the, one of the things that a lot of people ask is, hey, when can I use Git um, with the plugin repository? Um, this will probably not happen within this year. Um, but um, currently with feature plugins, what we do is we, we have a kind of like a sync tool between GitHub and um, the .org repo. Um, and so opening that one up to other plugins, not just feature plugins, could be something that um, could happen sooner rather than later. Um, so just you know, making it easier for you to develop your, your plugin on GitHub um, and, and you know, keeping it up to date on the .org side as well. Uh, I think we've got, certainly got time for one more question. Who else do we have? Jenny? Is this the last question? Uh, we'll see how quick it is, actually. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask, um, since you are all lead developers, and I know some of you have been there for a while, and some of you have been there quite recently, what is the best thing that you've seen happen as a lead, lead developer in the WordPress, in like your time working on the WordPress.org, and what is the worst time? And I want an answer from all of you. Uh, OK. so to Perhaps start with some of these experiences in US, Pascal. Um, <laughs> good question. I can't think of, of like the worst thing. Uh, yeah, it happened. But a good thing actually is that um, the the barrier um, for for entering uh, for contributing to core has lowered, so it's easier. There's better documentation um, because when I started contributing to core or reading about it. There was no um, no real good documentation, um, so it's definitely made easier. Um, yeah, but let me think about the bad part first. Um, I think we should we should clarify the term lead developer first. Um, none of us is actually a lead developer. Um, John is a con uh, is a permanent committer, um, and the rest of us three we are uh, guest committers to WordPress. Um, so I, I received commit access um, three weeks into uh, leading uh, WordPress 4.3, and uh, so that um, weighs heavy, very, very heavily on in my memory. Like I remember that part of my life very clearly. And um, <laughs> uh, one of the, the the things that I wish didn't really happen was the um, outcry of people after we started talking about adding menus to the customizer, mostly on WP Tavern. Um, where they felt like we ram features down their throats, um, did not, you know, d don't consider user needs. Um, uh, it got pretty ugly, to be honest, and I, I, I wish it, you know, wouldn't have gotten that far. Um, other than that, I was really proud that, um, yeah, we got actually to ship uh, menus in the customizer <laughs> in 4.3. Um, and that um, we were able to pull off another feature, which was a side icon um, fairly short notice in, in 4.3. Uh, so those, those are probably my, my high and low lights. Uh, I think the best thing that happened recently is when Matt Mullenweg dyed his hair gray at WordCamp <laughs> US last year. It's green now. Uh, oh, yeah, it went green last week, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I agree with Pascal. The uh, documentation drive that has happened over the last 18 months has been a a uh, huge boon to the whole project. So um, the inline documentation in the code of WordPress now powers the developer site, so there's no kind of duplication of effort there. And we're gradually getting rid of the codex uh, function references in the codex and replacing that with automatically generated documentation. That's a huge thing. Documentation is really important to open source projects, so that's probably my best thing that's happened recently. 
so I'm just going to focus on the best thing because I'm going to be quick and wrap it up, which for me is going back to the fact that the user experience is becoming so important and that people are asking this release, I was asked to use a test something and that to me just gave me such delight that it was happening um, and uh, also seeing uh, two committers who are designers uh, get commit access, that, that just gave me the happies. So uh, seeing the focus not just being on kind of pure developers and embracing everyone in the project because then that means we're going to embrace everybody who uses WordPress as well. Um, so we're just about out of time. Um, so uh, I'd like to thank everyone who contributed a question uh, and for coming so early this morning. Uh, but I'd like to ask you to uh, join me in a round of applause for, for our panel. Thank you. Thank you.